welcome everyone to this presentation today on prehab injury prevention testing for health and fitness professionals. Now, having been a physio of 20 odd years now inside fitness centres, I continue to be amazed at how far we've come as an as a education body. When I started back in the days when our fitness training course was a three day weekend in the bush, we used to go to the country and do three day courses, and that was our fitness leader training course. And now you have an incredible um, ability and a knowledge source to become great in the fitness industry and health industry. One thing I think that's lagged behind though has been in the area of pre-screening and injury assessment. And I think we do really, really good things. Our exercise programs have been tremendous. Our, our exercise selections are great. Our knowledge of things has been great. But I continue to see and saw when I had my physio practices, people are getting injured from a fitness program that could have been avoided if some things were done better at the early stage. Uh, I, I sort of wonder why that is. I think largely because we've become so good technically, we go straight to the technical things. And clients want that. They want the results. They want the strength. They want the fitness. They want the, the, the results of it. And can I tell you now, from a marketing perspective, it's really hard to sell prevention. Marketing, marketing prevention is one of the worst things you can try and sell. But once someone's injured, it's easy to sell that because you're going to give them a result immediately. But to, to, to sell them a session on, on screening to prevent injury, that's a tough flog in, in any business. So I understand your frustration, but we have to come to some consensus on this. And I think generally across the board, fitness professionals are great at the back end. They're great with their exercise selections. They are exceptional with their program designs, but they really miss out at the front. I don't have to agree with that, but I think from what I've seen, the lack of screening is a real big issue. And that's what this session's all about today. Now, we talked a little while ago about some shoulder things. Now, I want you to go into a pec stretch position. So we're going to put his hands now just next to his hands just next to his ears, and just relax as comfortable as he can. I'll just slide him back in that position. Now, a couple of things to look for: how far is his elbow off the ground that side compared to the other side, and how high are his hands right compared to left. Classic things you'll see. See that, or see that and that. Issues with rotation and pecs. Now, that's a pretty simple position to get into, but, because, but by not doing that, if the person gave you a history of shoulder problems previously, and you don't do this test, and you didn't think enough about asking more about the shoulder history before, the chance of you getting into pressing exercises, pressing exercises is pretty high. But my point is you should have screened them first, because there's no way this person, if he's got this sort of result, should be doing anything with his arms anywhere near, behind, or even overhead. You could argue we should be staying out in front, and you limit the angle of pressing. You certainly shouldn't be going up there. You probably might limit the 45 degree pressing angle until he gets that a bit better. Especially if we get a result in a couple of other tests as we go down the track. The other thing to look for here, so what muscles are we looking for? Yes. Peck major, the obvious. If I'm looking at the other one to watch for, have a look at how high the AC joint is off the ground right to left. Now if Darren's got a tight pec minor, his whole, the whole shoulder girdle may be lifted off the floor. So he might be asymmetrical, the whole shoulder girdle in front. Again, it might be a pec minor uh, tightness. So again, worth looking at what the uh, height of his AC joints right to left, and the disparity of his elbow right to left and his hand right to left. Okay, a couple of things regarding the test you just did, the, the pec minor, pec major test. We had one person in the crowd who, whose shoulder went down really flat and the other one was just off the ground. It doesn't have to be the stiff shoulder that's the painful one. He had instability in this shoulder. So the, the, the dislocation history may be loose and unstable. It may just be all the way flat here and really loose. This one might be just up and you might say, well, what's normal? Uh, I'm not that fussed on normal. I'm more concerned with right versus left differences. Unless it's extreme, unless he's here and he's totally flat and small. That's, that's pretty good, he's flat. But again, is he unstable? Has he had a history of shoulder dislocations? That might be a good result if he's had a history of dislocation. Okay, so really look for those right to left differences. Now, if, if you do no other test other than this one, the others are great. If you do no other test other than this one, you are miles in front of 99% of most trainers. And, and I've had physio clinics for 20 years, and there's not a physio clinic room that we've had that hasn't had a bit of tape on the ground to mark the distance. This is, this is an essential test. It's called a lunge test. I'm going to get Darren to do it for me. Okay, get into a lunge position. Basically what he does, he takes one foot close to the wall, take right against the wall first. Now, what we're testing here is ankle dorsiflexion range. Now again, don't get too fussed about the position, but as long as he keeps the same right to left, he's going to keep his pelvis level, the 
that leg's there, that's fine. As long as it's the same in the other leg when we test it, that's fine. What I want Darren to do is try and lunge forward and take that knee so it can just touch the wall. So that's fair enough. It can touch the wall. If it can touch the wall, Darren, move your foot back from the wall about a centimetre, do it again. It can touch the wall. Move back another centimetre. Now, this is why on the floor of our, of our roof we have a, a bit of tape mark with one, two, three, four, five, up to whatever centimetres on the wall. It keeps coming around. Now, they come, there'll come a time, I don't want anything else to change too radically here, there comes a time when Darren can't get his knee to the wall without his heel starting to lift. How close are we, Dave? Three, boys. Does it matter about the back of it? No, I'm not, as I said, I'm not, I'm not that fussed about what happens, because realistically, he can lift this foot up. And it shouldn't change too much what happens here, as long as not much rotates through here. But keep it the same, as long as it's the same this side when you do the other side. As long as you've got a consistent right to left difference, or comparison. How close is it? You can even see my hip. I mean, that still makes no difference to what's happening at the, uh, at the ankle. We're really, we're really isolating this. We're trying to isolate the ankle joint. And this is, I'll tell you, this is the most important test you'll ever do as a trainer. Nothing, there's nothing short of it. Now, Darren, so can you do it barefoot or something? Yeah, as long as it's the same right to left. Can you do it shoulder to shoulder? Yeah, as long as it's the same right to left. And don't compare his shoe results to his bench results. Because if you compare his shoe results to his bench results, you're going to get a very different result. Because he's going to be doing something that's going to be Let's go. Quick. Find a wall, find a path. Let's go. Uh, 